everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. I am Monica, the homesteading housewife, and I am so happy to have you. So today I am bringing you along for my make ahead mashed potatoes. Now these do not have to be just for make ahead. I would advise doing them this way every time. Um, they are the best. They were approved by my husband who is a potato snob. Um, he I have him so spoiled with mashed potatoes or potatoes in general that he can tell when I change the slightest ingredient. Um, but these are by far the best. Um, and you can do the make ahead. So these can either be refrigerated for, um, I would do up to a week uh, just because um, as far as leftovers go, a week in the fridge is pretty much my max. I know some people go over that I don't um, freezing however I've had some frozen for six months and they were still amazing so there's that um, and I always store them in Ziploc bags because then you can easily just uh, cut off a corner and squeeze it all out um, and you can do Dutch um, Dutch potatoes that way if um, you wanted to go that route but today we're just doing mashed potatoes we're getting them ready for Thanksgiving. So I'm going to bring you along and I hope you enjoy the recipe and ignore the messy kitchen. Okay, so to start off with these potatoes, I go ahead and peel mine. Now usually when I'm doing mashed potatoes, I don't peel them, um, but I find that you just get a better result if you peel um, your potatoes. Okay, so I go ahead, whenever I am doing mashed potatoes, whether I peel them or not, I do slice them. Like, they can be thick chunks, thin chunks, but the smaller pieces you have, the quicker it's going to cook up. And since this is probably, because there were some bad potatoes, it's probably eight pounds of potatoes. So I have them in here, and then we are actually going to be doing a mixture of milk and cream to cook them in. Um, we are not going to be using water. And so that is one of the main differences in these mashed potatoes versus other ones. But I am so excited to show you guys these because they're game changers. So all I'm doing is adding enough stuff to cover them. So it really depends on how many potatoes you're using as to how much liquid you're going to use. But I do use more uh, milk than cream just because cream's expensive. Um, now, if I'm making just mashed potatoes um, with like a hand mixer or um, a potato masher, I will exclusively use cream. Like, no doubt about it, there is no milk that goes into it. But, this is a little different because we're going to be cooking it in the milk and cream. And then we're going to be straining it, but keeping the milk and cream and adding it back in. So, it's going to give it just a ton of flavor. It's really, really good. Um, and you can see that there are some potatoes that are still sticking up. That is okay. Because um, they're going to cook down. And then you want to add some salt and then we are going to just bring this up and let them um, cook on a good simmer uh, for for this will probably take about 15 minutes probably essentially you want them to be soft once they're done it's done so bring it back Okay, so the first thing that you want to do whenever your potatoes are done, so fork tender, falling apart, that's what you want. First thing you're going to do is strain out that milk and cream mixture from your potatoes. But do not toss it out because we're going to be putting it back in to the potatoes. Okay, 
So I'm going to be using a food mill because that is what I have. You could also use a ricer um, if you wanted to go that route. I don't have one, um, and I don't plan on getting one anytime soon. So I use a food mill, and it works out just fine. So I have it over top of the pot that I cook the potatoes in, and you're just going to put your strained cooked potatoes into your food mill and process them. And I'm going to do this for the entire batch of potatoes. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it all gets riced or milled in my case, is it looks like big chunks of potato rice. Um, so now, and here's all my mixture. Now, <clears throat> I am not going to discard if there's extra because we may not need to put all of this back into our potatoes. This is excellent to do mashed sweet potatoes, which I'm actually going to be doing like a, well, it's my sweet potato casserole, but they're almost souffle-ish. Um, use it for that. Use it for creamed corn. Um, so if you don't use it all, put it in your fridge. Uh, don't just throw it out because it's not, it's not water. It's kind of expensive. So we're going to start with a stick of butter and then we're going to add just a little bit of salt just because there is salt in this, but we're not going to be using all of it. So we're not going to get all the salt that it has to offer. And then I also want to put in some black pepper. I like putting it in at the end because raw black pepper has more nutritional benefits than when it's cooked. So I always like to add it fresh to the end product. And then we're just going to slowly add in. We'll start with that much. And you just want to start stirring it. We don't have to use um, any type of masher. And you can see it's already just, oh, I can't explain how good this is. It gives it such a fluffy but creamy texture. It's just, it's amazing. So we're going to stir until that butter melts and then see where our thickness is and go from there. Okay, I've added in a little more and the butter is melted. So at this point, really at any point, you're doing it to the texture that you want. Uh, my mammals potatoes were always really thin, but I actually like them thick. Um, but I wish, I wish you could see the texture of these potatoes better. They are just outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. And it honestly doesn't really take that much longer than using a blender. So that doesn't bother me at all. And you can see it still gets super smooth. It's just, it's nice. So we will taste test. Delicious. I'm going to add a little more salt. And then I'm also going to put more butter in, but I'm going to let it sit on top and just melt that way because there's enough butter in it, but there's not enough butter in it. <laughs> and so I'll stir it in just after it melts. Uh, but this was almost 10 pounds of potatoes, so it doesn't bother me at all putting two sticks of butter in at all. Boop. So that's it. If you're wanting, you know, to just eat it right away, it's ready. If you're wanting um, to make it ahead, let it cool, 
I recommend a Ziploc bag and then store it in the fridge or freezer until you're ready to use it. To heat it back up, do it extremely low heat and add a little bit of milk or cream uh, to it just so it doesn't scorch on the bottom and keep stirring it until it starts heating up and loosening up because it will thicken when it's cold. Um, just so you don't scorch anything, but that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching.